Guys, before we get into the video, don't forget to click all the buttons. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell, text me, send me a fax, whatever you gotta do to help our channel grow, and let's get back to the video. So coming back from the F1 event, probably the biggest concentration of luxury watches I've ever seen. We are in a suite by the start finish line and the box next to us had like 12 RMs in it alone. Everywhere you're walking, people are just wearing the sickest watches. F1, what an amazing sport, what an amazing time, what an amazing atmosphere. I was lucky enough to go there with a couple of people that really know about F1, I've been following for a while. He wants to explain to me that this is a game of not inches, but millimeters and milliseconds and the technology that goes behind these F1 cars. I immediately got hooked. And when I got back to the office, I got a crazy idea of hanging an F1 car from the ceiling of our office since we're remodeling anyway. If this video gets 20,000 likes, I'm going to buy an F1 car. So I got notified actually between the dealer chats that uh, there was four confirmed RM robberies, one of which was an RM004 NTPT Asia edition, which is valued at about 700 grand today. So the guy actually just called in, spoke to Sabina, but I'm gonna give him a call. Watch ceiling, it's really big in the magic community. So in this situation, a drunk guy comes up to this businessman, puts his arm around him, acting super, you know, super fun, oh, I'm drunk, whatever, his friend comes over to distract him. And as he's doing that, you can see close up, he's pulling the watch off this guy's wrist, but he doesn't know it. The guy has no idea and he goes back to his business with probably a forty dollars to $70,000 watch off his wrist. This also was made famous too by David Blaine. He would take two cards, have the spectators hold it, shake their hands and pretend like they would switch. But really the trick is taking their watch off and he would undo the strap, pull back and then boom, swipe away and later reveal that, hey, I stole your watch. Now it's a lot more difficult with a, uh, a clasp watch because you have to take the whole watch off their wrist. You can't just take it and pull it off right through. So yeah. Be careful out there. Oh, I'm so sorry. Never being on camera again. Sorry. See you. Give me a hug. I'm just curious, how did it happen? You were walking out of the event and they just came up and swapped the red off the yeah, wrist? It was just, just walking out, there was just this part where it, it kind of got tight. Literally, my arms were just, like, the arms were just down. They just got swiped. I couldn't even, I couldn't even tell who took it. Oh, man. We, we actually know a police officer in, in Miami who's, who's high ranking position. He actually texted us and said, there's a suspect wearing red shorts. Every dealer knows about it at this point, so they'll know that a 10 out of 15 with no papers is stolen. Whoever stole the watch knew what they were doing. They were probably tailing you from the get. They know exactly what they're looking out for, right? And they probably had a plan in, in mind. They can't sell it in the US. They understand that pretty well, right? My guess is they would, they would try to have it leave overseas. So I'm gonna put a bunch of blasts out there and see what we can come up with. Hopefully I'll, I'll come Thanks. back with some good news. All right, man. All right. Great day. Bye -bye. You know, we, we actually, because all of us were wearing watches, I was wearing an, R, an RM, Roman was wearing an RM, my dad was wearing his paddock, Jess was wearing an expensive role. All of us were basically wearing something expensive. You know, everybody was at F1. Uh, and we actually made it a point that when the races, we were there Saturday and Sunday, when the races ended, the qualifiers ended Saturday and the race ended Sunday, we made sure to kind of sit back and just chill because there's just a, a mosh pit of people that are leaving. There's like hundreds of thousands of people. So, if somebody comes up and swipes it off your wrist, you might not even find them in that in that crazy mosh face. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. We'll see what we can do to help them. In the meantime, I have a client coming over to sell me a watch. Pleasure come. Sorry to keep you waiting, man. It's all good, bro. This is a Vacheron Constantine overseas rose gold with the prettiest blue dial on the market. Here's what that looks like. Checking to make sure all the serial numbers, movement numbers, everything matches up. And everything looks good. It's a brand new watch. So it really isn't that much to, to look out for. It's pretty self-explanatory, April dated, so. All right, man, we're good to go. We got a fo photo ID, we have his bank wire information, all of his information, so we're good to go. We're gonna go ahead and send the wire now. I sold about four watches this week. Patek 5961A, and I also sold the same client a Rolex Sky Dweller. Earlier in the week, I sold a Cartier Flying Turb, that's not the full name, but I can't pronounce it. Um, and a Rolex Datejust Two-Tone Rose Gold. The sales this month have been uh, going pretty well. Uh, I'm definitely picking myself up and doing a lot better. What's going on? How are you, brother? Yeah, thanks. Good to see you. Hey guys, my name is George Cocodellis, uh, timecopnj.com. Uh, I came here to see the guys at Luxury Bazaar to do a trade with Nick with some awesome pieces and to show him some stuff and to give him some gifts. Carl Lagerfeld. Whoever you're selling that to, I would love to see it on their wrist. Yeah. 
It's a, it's a cool piece. It's cool, it's just... man. That's why when I saw it, I was like, you know, it's, there's definitely a, there's definitely a buyer. There's got to be something. For it. Yeah. So an interesting trade: a Rolex Datejust uh, that George, aka the Time Cop, was trading in for 14 different fashion watches. I got something for you. Oh yeah. What were you asking for the uh, the Schumachers? I want to sell them as a set. Okay. I'm thinking about eight for the set, and I have them individually marked. This one has service papers. Okay. In a box. These two have these two have uh, bracelets. Okay. This one has an Omega leather strap. Oh wow. That is the Ikeo dial. They made them in the 70s. The watchmakers yes. had them like hand painted on there it's for the tourists that came to Japan. What are you asking for the IWC? 49. Complete 2018 or 19. Sir, how are you? Somebody call 911? Yeah. Happy belated. Oh, thank you. How are you? I appreciate Here. it. Happy uh, birthday. We're getting drunk today? If you want. Hey, it's Monday. <laughs> I just I just like the box. I don't I've never I was like, that looks pretty cool. This is really cool. <laughs> yeah. So and, it, and it's a limited edition. Yeah, exactly. So thank you. Thank you. I know very much. I oh, know you. Really <laughs> is Nick selling your shit? Is yeah. Is he giving you good pricing? I hope so. <laughs> this week I sold a Rolex Cellini Moon Phase, Patek Philippe 5327 Rose Gold Perpetual Calendar. Actually sold two of those. Also sold a ceramic offshore blue dial, the 44 millimeters. And I'm working on a few Rolex Daytonas, a ladies offshore, um, and a bunch of other things. So the sales team is busier than ever, which is a really good thing. However, that can lead to a lot of our customers not getting an answer right away, which is always a huge problem, and we really do our best to make that happen. Okay, I'm about to call a guy who's yelling at my sales guys. For what reason, I have no idea. Hey, hi, my name is Adrian from Luxury Bazaar. How are you? Good, Adrian. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. I, I just, uh, I was walking by my sales guys, and they said that a very angry gentleman by the name of Guy called in and was, uh, you know, putting us down and cursing us out, and I'm trying to get down to the no, bottom no, no, of no, what no, exactly hold happened. Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. I, I never cursed you out, ever. I don't, I don't curse. But very, very, very dissatisfied, yes. But no, I, I never cursed you out, ever. Okay, I'd like, I'd like to get down to the bottom of what, why you, you are dissatisfied. You're projecting yourself as somebody that wants to take on these young, unknowledgeable individuals under your wing and saying, hey, look, this is what this is going for. This is why this, this particular submariner has this particular, um, you know. So, so I said, you know what, you know, I told my wife, I said, you know what's wonderful about this guy? They're straight shooters. Look at this guy. This guy just walked up to the counter, doesn't know what he's got. They showed it to him, they explained it to him. Now I'm going, you know, I told my wife the other day, I said, you know, uh, honey, I said, you know, all that is all marketing. It's all bull. I had a Submariner, um, at this Tiffany company, and I call it in. I said, my client wants to sell it. So I call it in. The guy goes, well, uh, you know, I don't know. You're a Submariner. You know, uh, first of all, you know, we can't really give you a prize because, you know, it's going to need a crystal. I'm going, oh, my God. This guy's actually going to talk to me about a crystal or a tube or a crown or... You know. Let me just stop you there. I'm not sure which representative you spoke to. They cannot make an offer on that watch, nor nor do they know. We don't do much vintage stuff here. In other words, we took that watch and we forwarded it to a knowledgeable person that we deal with on a vintage level. And then he basically just told you exactly what was told to him. There's no need to put anybody down and, and you know, come off as... Oh. I'm talking to you. I'm not going. I'm yeah. So well, let, well, well, let, let me let me ask you let me ask you let me ask you a question. It doesn't matter if you're in the industry since 1897. Okay. We treat everybody here the exact same. How come you never called in and asked for me? I'm the one that does the transactions here. I don't know who. But I, I, I didn't know who to. I, I wanted to start. Well, if you if you watch if you watch the YouTube, you know you know that I'm like I'm I'm the guy on the transactional level. This is my father's business. Okay. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe you and I will meet in Vegas. I think Vegas. Is we're in, we're 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 at IWJG every single show. How come you never came out to our showcase? I apologize. I'm just saying. Are you the other gentleman that's always on on on, uh, on YouTube? Yeah, I'm the younger, more handsome one. That's me. That's me. <laughs> I'm age. I I I am Adrian. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure talking. I mean this to you. It's a pleasure talking to you. I just want a straight shooter. I want to look at you and say, dude, I trust you a thousand percent. We try our absolute hardest to get back to everybody as soon as possible. We're just 
supremely overwhelmed. Yeah. I didn't know that you called in. I didn't know who you were. It's a pleasure to meet you. The reason I wanted to give you a call was because I wanted to treat you like we treat everybody else, with integrity and with respect. And maybe this could be a good relationship moving forward. But I was under the impression that there was a guy that called in. He was angry about essentially nothing because Roman wouldn't pick up the phone. And well, Roman, Roman runs the company. He's the CEO and founder. He doesn't do much on the transactional level other than what you see at the IWJG shows. So I'm just gonna let you know fr from now on, if there's any watch questions or trades or deals or any anything you need help on, you can contact me direct. Listen, let's just take this as a stepping stone to um, to start doing business. I expect to be doing millions with you. And, and, and I truly appreciate you taking the time to call. Yep, my pleasure. Have a good one. Thank you, Adrian. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. That is how you do damage control. He said we were gonna do millions. Yeah. Let's do millions. Let's, uh, let's go around, let's see what people have got. Let's see what Nick, let's start with Nick. Nick, anything interesting or cool on the table? Yeah, actually, Marco, what can you tell me about this Seamaster 600-166.077? Oh, wow, I'm glad you know the reference number off I do, the top of your head. I do, because it's my grail watch. <laughs> this is cool, actually. I don't know much about them, admittedly. I know that it is a Ploprof, and it's actually made from one solid block of steel, at least mm -hmm. the case was. So you're right on the money. Uh, so it was developed in the late seven, or early 70s, I'm sorry, it was actually a development between Omega and Comex. This was supposed to be what Comex was gonna go with instead of the Submariner. Yeah. So it is, a, uh, I believe it's called a monolock system, uh, where it's, you're right, it's one steel piece, and then it's just a matter of taking the bezel off, and then that's how you exit, you know, getting to the movement, you know, the different uh, sealants, things of that nature. There's no helium skate valve on this watch. Honestly, the condition on that is yeah. is pretty great. Certainly a Nick watch. Certainly so a Nick stay watch. Stay tuned. The, the definition of a Nick watch. What are you working on? What what do you got on the table? I'll give you an easy one. What can you tell me about this watch right here? Sell me this watch. But I, it, that's uh, that's such a cliche question. Like, how did you, what is that even? What do you know about it? So the Vacheron, this was released shortly after the Royal Oak was released. Yeah. Uh, this was Vacheron's sort of like entry into like that sporty, full, you know. Integrated bracelet. bracelet. Exactly, integrated yeah. bracelet, that whole. You know the uh, original area. reference? Uh, it was two, or no, it was one. No, no, you got it right. It's two. Four, two, two, two. Seven, two, two. It's actually the 222 because they released it in 1977 to celebrate the 222nd anniversary of the brand. So originally found in 1755, so 1977. Yeah. A couple interesting facts, right? The movement itself, there's something right here. It's called the Geneva Seal. It's a governing body in Switzerland that was established to certify watches that have like the highest quality of finishing right. uh, to their watch. Not just movement, but case also. Obviously this is great, more versatile than the AP Royal Oak or the Nautilus because you, you can take off the bracelet. Band. Yeah, and a black dial, I think it's actually pretty nice. For the blue still. Yeah, I definitely prefer the blue, but yeah. Right. No, I'll take the black any day. Nice watch. Let's see what Chris knows. Chris, what can you tell me about this one? To be fair, this is an oddball. And I, I would do be know shocked. Panerai was originally used by the Italian Navy in mm -hmm. World War II. They commissioned watches for the divers. Yes. I do know that. That is correct. I do know okay. a lot of the Panerais do actually use reworked Eta movements, correct? Yeah, origi not originally, but that is part of it. Yeah, they definitely use reworked Eta movements. So this is, I believe, the reference 203. Now, Panerai itself, the original Panerai was the Radimir for the loom, right? So it was a radium based loom. Obviously, you can't use it today because it's very, uh, very it cancerous. You, it, makes, it makes your balls fall off. Yeah, pretty actually. much, right? The Luminor was released a little later in 1949, also for a luminous substance that they patented in, in 1949 that was tritium-based, and that's where this, this watch name actually comes from. And original Panerais were uh, powered by a Rolex Cordobera movement, so it was Rolex branded, but it was a third party. And then they switched later to an Angelus movement with an eight-day power reserve manual wind, and that's what you see in this watch, actually, in the Luminor. Yeah. Case. What you don't know is that this was the Panerai to have during the whole Paneristi craze. Panerai's had like a fall from grace since then, but they were the first like real hardcore collector group online at least, right? There was a whole Paneristi forum. Listen, there's a Pan and we just had a Paneristi edition Panerai. Yeah, like they were the first ones to have like a serious, like dedicated collector base. People will have like five, six of their watches and just completely geek out online over them. But yeah, this is like holy grail Panerai, right? Angelus powered Panerai's. I mean, these are the original old stock movements. I would love to know when this was released. So 
There is like a collector community pre-Panerai and post-Panerai sale, which is called pre-Vendome and post-Vendome. Obviously their pre-Vendome stuff is very, very collectible. So I'd love to know when this was originally released before or after 1997, but yeah. Damn. You like that, Alex? <laughs> like, huh? It's a little like... Do we approve the chain yes, on the deck? Yes, I approve, but I don't approve the cap. <laughs> what else should we add on? Um, more chains. <laughs> if it was like a little longer, honestly, I would tell Sabina to... What's the cost? $23,500. PayPal covers that. Honestly, heavy. Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's gold. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> This is a Bulgari Serpentine bracelet. It's got wood, rose gold, and diamonds. And Gary just put this on my desk and said, Zendaya wore this, do you want to post about it? And I said, yes, <laughs> I sure do. What do you like about it? I mean, I just, I really love, it's hard to explain what I love about the Serpentine style in general, but the way that it kind of overlays each other like that, how they really make it like an actual snake, I think is really cool. Not that I'm like a huge fan of snakes or anything, but I would wear it with, now I have to close my eyes and think. I love a good leather, oversized leather jacket. I wear it pretty much every day. Um, that was not what I was expecting. I, I was expecting more like a like a casual dress. I mean like, I don't know, slim brown dress, tan heels, or I don't know. I'm just, oh yeah, I'm just going. I'm just that. going based off the color. Also, I like um, brown with green. Yeah, I was about to say green too. Yeah, green would be good. Hey Nick. <laughs> oh, hello Kyle. What, what do we got here? I got uh, some watches I'm gonna be posting to the gray market group today. So I've got 5500V, uh, Vestron Constantine. Awesome chrono if you're looking for something that you don't see too often. It's a great option for you. Now I've got your standard Jubilee Pepsi, another classic, 126710BLRO. Says it's so weird. He says tomatoes, I say tomatoes. Yeah. 710. Yeah, you just got it. That's not how I said I have an 116610, 40mm Submariner. Just can't go wrong with that. Have we sold any yet? Kyle, I just pulled this out of the vault. Maybe I did. This one, I'm. Posting to the group because the guy that was supposed to buy it hasn't messaged me back yet. All the watches here. That's what are you taking home? Well, I already have a chrono, so I'm not taking this IWC home, but I think my next purchase will either be an IWC or a Panerai, to be honest with you. Great watch. Not a big fan of Blue Dial watches, but AP Royal Oaks. Flip one, trade one. Keep one? Yes. Yeah. Flip the Pepsi. Because you can get them pretty pretty quickly. Trade the 5500V, uh, and then if I was to keep one, probably the 15202. For those who don't remember, this one. And keep this. Malka is here. Thank you, sir. The best thing for a watch dealer is hearing that Malka is here. Yeah. That means that something special has come. That is a white gold frosted AP. The new reference 26239BC, exhibition back with the new subdial formation. Brown boxes, always love the brown boxes. Good things come in brown boxes. 5982 tone, 5980-1AR. It's a little bit of a touch up, 2018. And we have, oh, nice. Look familiar? No, not in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> totally different look on a blue rubber strap and titanium. Yeah, this is no titanium, way. this is white gold. This is fire. So we got a 6701 titanium. We have a two tone 5980 slash one AR. And then we have a Royal Oak frosted AP. Market price on this today in this condition is about 165,000. For the 6701 TI in the 2022 with the new style warranty, market price is about 210,000. We're gonna be asking for this. And for the frosted, we just actually sold one last week for 220. So if we can get somewhere around there right now, I'd be very happy with that too. Yeah, I like the uh, the black dial variant of this. Yeah. Literally, any, any other colors they put out? Like the purple one is cool, but it's like you can't wear it every day. You of course, have to, you, like, you know yeah. I'm a fan of the purple. It's listen, I like the purple too, but it's just like it, it's you have to wear it special occasions. Yeah, you got like it's, it's super loud. super loud. Now, if they made this with a green dial. Oh, I would. That just the, made it. They just they just did the new uh, steel one in green and it just it like it's just okay. Yeah. They made it like a little more royal, like uh, 
not a Daytona, like not a Green Daytona, green, but like uh, somewhere between that. Somewhere in between, like that. British yeah, racing, yeah. Green? Like, like an olive, like an olive okay. day day green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That would, that would slap, as they say. Roman hates when I use that <laughs> word. I don't want to use that word. Bro, we can't use that anymore. Too old. <laughs> slaps. I've seen before, like if we're at a trade show in Hong Kong, I had a couple of dealers walk up to me with, uh, with I forget what R, it was an RM11 of some sort, and the strap here was ripped, right? So he's I was like, clearly tried it, yeah. so the strap was ripped. So I asked him, I was like, yeah, does this have box and papers? And he's like, no, it doesn't have box and papers. And when I saw that rip in the strap, I'm like, I know for sure that this is stolen. Yeah. Because what they'll do is they'll wear this ring with yeah, a hook, hook with a hook it. under it. Yeah. In Europe, it's like it's like a common thing. They wear a hook, with, a ring with a hook. And they come up and just it's like crazy. professionals. Guys, of all the three watches that we just had, which one is your favorite? Comment down below. They're all about the same market value, right? Right around at two hundred thousand dollars mark. Would you rather have an RM, very sporty? Would you rather have a two-tone paddock, or a frosted full white gold AP? Hey, Adrian. hey, so tell, tell me what happened. Okay, so my outside sales guy brought a deal to the table. Yeah. And then this guy comes in my showroom, you know, checks out the watch. They go get a cashier's check and the motherfucker uh, cancels the cashier's check. How do you cancel After a cashier's you check? You can, you can, Jenny. This is why I don't take cashier's checks at all. I've had multiple scams with cashier's checks with these guys that would actually find a real cashier's check, type it out on the typewriter, bring it in, and either the money's just not even there or it's just fake. Well, if something is too good to be true, it usually is in the case of this cashier's check scam. And trust me, we've been a target of that over 40 times, we've never gotten caught. We went with him to Chase Bank. He pulled it out right in front of us and he put in the pin and everything. And even my bankers at Chase, the managers, they all are fighting for me. It went up to like upper management, because they looked into the other guy's account and the money's still in there, you know? And there- we, uh, we, had, we had that happen as well. Account. The problem yeah, with cash- a lawyer like try to argue because it's not lost, stolen, or destroyed. There's only three grounds where a cashier's check can be like canceled, right? The last time I had an issue with a cashier's check, uh, they, yeah. um, I called the bank and they're like, well, technically we're not responsible. I'm like, guys, I, I didn't. I wasn't in the bank. I called them. I said, "Hey, is this check good?" And they said, "Yes, the check is good. You're okay. You can release the item." After that, when they right. said we're not taking responsibility, I told my guys, "If you go, if you're gonna take the time to go to a bank and give me a cashier's check, you can go to the bank and get me a wire." That's right. That's right. But if but if you were in the bank with the guy as he did this and pulled it out of an account, at this point your attorney should be speaking with the bank and saying, "Hey, we were physically there." The guy physically pulled out the funds. What are the grounds of canceling this check? I delivered the product to him. Did you give him the product at the bank after he gave you the check? No, he went back to my showroom. I have it all on you know, surveillance. I have the video clip. Like he handed us the check at the end. He took the watch and he walked. But you know, it's only Chase Bank that's where it's quite easy to, to get a cashier's check canceled if you call. And it's a 24 hour process. So they knew exactly what they were doing. Well, so, look, Jenny, so. if, if, you, if you need anything from us, obviously we're here. You I'm, I'm actually gonna be talking to my attorney a little bit later on a different matter. I will bring this up and see what she has to say just as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this into, into my Hong Kong chats as well, because chances are you know where it's going back, right? Oh my so. gosh. If, if, if you can do that, please. Yeah, of course, we'll do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, again, we're sorry to hear this. If there's anything that you need from us, obviously, yeah. and I'll talk to my attorney just for shits and giggles. Perhaps she may give me a, you know, a piece of information that you may not know or something. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate this. I love you guys. That's a shame. I've actually never heard of that happening before like that. I, I didn't even know you can reverse a cashier's check because my knowledge of cashier's check was you going in, showing proof of funds, and them just writing you a slip, essentially. I put a bunch of calls out to different dealers I'm gonna put it on our social medias and um, see what we can do to help. Guys, thank you for watching. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. If this video gets 20,000 likes, I'm going to buy an F1 car. Chelsea, you're committing me to a ton of money. You know that, right? So guys, there you have it. Thank you, Chelsea, and thank you for watching.